Yeah, man. Once that lays up on the screen, I'll start. <coughs> So good evening, folks. Again, my name is Derek Carr. I'm here from the Department of Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities. I'd like to welcome all of you here, and thank you to Jeff for having me this evening. We'll talk a little bit about the Department of Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities. As Jeff said, I worked for him, with him, for many years. Um, I work with a very dynamic, wonderful group of people who really believe in service to our county. I firmly believe that. I also believe that I work in one of the very best departments in our county. And I hope that uh, by being here tonight, you get a little glimpse of what we do and know a little bit more about us. So let's get started. Recently, with, within the last nine months, uh, we were joined by a new director, Mr. Michael Morris. And with, when Mr. Morris came in, um, we looked at our mission statement, and we wanted to review it, and we wanted to see if it fit anymore. So the first thing we did was to take a look at that. We formed a team of employees from throughout our organization, and we looked at what is our mission statement. We decided that it didn't really work anymore. So we devised a new one with a team of our employees and part of our leadership team in the Department of Parks and Recreation. We formed this, this uh, mission statement, and we feel that really sums up what we do for our community. <coughs> In addition to a mission statement, uh, Mr. Morris asked to come up with some purpose statements for our department. What is our purpose? What is it we're really here to do for our citizens? And these are the things on the screen that we came up with. This was also done by a team of employees put together from across our department and also uh, talked about and discussed during our, our own leadership team meeting. So here's what we came up with. Activity guides. Jeff said he put one in your packet. Um, I have one right here. I hope you'll pick, well you have one, so you won't need to pick one up. We have an activity guide that comes out quarterly. Uh, inside the activity guide, you'll find a variety of different programs and activities for individuals of all different abilities and also all different ages. So take a look at that in your packet, and there's certainly numbers inside there to give us a call so that um, if we can help you with anything or give you other information. So take a look at our activity brochure. Some of you may already be receiving these in the mail with, with the newspaper, so, okay. Our department scope. We have a very large scope, and that's one thing I'd like to share with you this evening. These are all of the things that are under our department. Everything from aquatics to trips, including park maintenance, park amenities, buildings and facilities. Our responsibilities include, and you can read those there, 19 parks. <laughs> 55 athletic fields, 10 playgrounds, 7 tennis courts, 4 community centers, 3 boat ramps, and multiple buildings. <coughs> Let's talk a little bit about our aquatics. We have two swimming pools, Woodlands Pool, along with the Mark Lindsay Pool at Curtis Park. Some of you may have visited those. We also have waterfronts. Quiet Landing would be one. Some of you maybe have been there. Historic Port of Falmouth. And the newest one of all of these is Lake Mooney. I don't know if anyone's been to Lake Mooney. Lake Mooney is a beautiful reservoir. Um, we also have restrooms there that have just been established. And we're um, waiting to finish up on our kayak launch there. So beautiful reservoir, Lake Mooney, uh, off of Route 17. Is anyone familiar with it? Okay, some people, beautiful place to go, uh, really lovely. So we hope we'll take a look at that. Just started fishing in Lake Mooney um, this summer in July. So something to go and see. Team sports, of course we have a sports division. 
Um, we do uh, provide to the community all of these different sports. We, uh, a quick story on that is that um, last spring, we, we went to flag football. Uh, and we had a great turnout. We really did have a wonderful turnout. And in the fall, we run tackle football. We have, historically, we've always had tackle football for, for our youth in the community. So we thought, well, we had such a good turnout. Why don't we try flag football in the fall as well? And we were a little concerned, you know, because are we going to compete for those same children who want to play tackle, some want to play flag? Well, guess what? Our numbers went up in tackle, and I think we had around 250 chil additional children sign up to play flag. So it worked out really well. We're running both programs simultaneously in the county, so children and parents can choose between either flag football now or tackle football in the fall. So we're really excited about that, and that's something new our, our sports division is doing. Park amenities. Um, anybody, and we're going to have a slide in a minute, but anybody familiar with Chichester Park? Anybody? I, I, Please go to Chichester Park. Please go. It is a beautiful park. It's primarily a park um, for our youth baseball players, but it's a park for everyone. Uh, we have a beautiful picnic pavilion there. But just last year, we opened an inclusive playground. Inclusive meaning for everyone to play on, regardless of their ability. It's a beautiful playground. The picture down at the bottom is the celebration that day uh, when we had groups together. We worked together with the schools. We worked together with various vendors to have an opening that day to unveil the playground. Um, it, it's a wonderful playground. It's the only one in the area, and I think we're really fortunate in Stafford County um, and thankful to have that playground for our community. Park maintenance. So our park maintenance, they maintain all of our parks. They, main, they do snow removal at our fire stations. They do snow removal at this building. Uh, they are very involved in our community. Uh, so in addition to the upkeep of our parks, they have many other varied duties that, they, uh, that they're involved with. There's a picture of Chichester Park. As you can see, it's a four-diamond complex. Uh, the, dime, the fifth diamond to the left, that's a 90-foot field, so that's a Babe Ruth age field. But uh, just a, a really beautiful park. I, I really encourage you to take a drive out there and take a look at that park. It's uh, uh, really, really something to see. Embry Mill. Some of you may be familiar with Embry Mill. It's our newest, our newest addition to our parks. Um, through the vision of our Board of Supervisors, um, this construction took place, uh, I believe we opened now just over a year ago. Uh, we now have eight synthetic turf fields there and two grass fields. Uh, last night, well, Tuesday night it was, um, I think we had something on every single field, whether it was youth football, soccer, um, a multitude of activities going on. As I told you, we have flag and tackle going on. They all play there at Embry Mill. So really exciting. Another beautiful park you should go and see. Um, beautiful amenities for our community. Duff's Dog Park opened in 2015, as you can see. Um, the dog park has actually three different parks within the dog park itself. So it shows you there what the different uh, weights are for the dogs. Um, it's... It's the first of its kind in Stafford County. Um, we get very good reviews about our dog park. So if you have a dog and you want to go down and take your dog off the leash, I um, encourage you to go down to Duff's and check out our dog park. History and culture. Um, that was another one of our, in our purpose statement. Uh, we have these uh, amenities, certainly. Um, I don't know if you've been to Rouser and seen the Rouser mural. The mural was dedicated uh, during the 350th ce celebration. I encourage you to go to Rouser to see the mural. If you haven't been to Government Island, of course, that's a wonderful walk. Um, our Stafford Civil War Park, we've just added a new pavilion there. So that's something to go and see. Another, another park that um, is relatively new in our community. And then, of course, Shelton's Cottage. And Shelton's Cottage, I don't know if you are familiar with that, that's down on River Road. So um, 
those are our history and culture, the things that, the different things that we maintain. Community facilities. So this is the part of our name, Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities. This, this is something that we do that a lot of people don't realize that we do. So we have some of the greatest, most innovative employees who maintain this building we're sitting in, who main, make sure that it is clean, that the temperature is comfortable, that the lights stay on. Um, and I'm making this very simple, of course. It's very complex. This is a very big building. But they also do these same things at our public safety building, at the courthouse, in the Chichester building. They do this at our firehouses, which we also, I should have mentioned when we talked about snow removal, and I may have, but we, we remove the snow. During, during the snow episodes, Parks and Recreation is moving the snow from the firehouses in case there is an emergency to assist them to get out to help our citizens. So we work together. But we main, our department actually maintains these. And one area that people sometimes don't realize is Parks and Recreation maintains the libraries in Stafford County. We do the maintenance there. The libraries, of course, are run, run by the uh, Rappahannock Regional Library System. But we have folks that go there and do maintenance at the libraries. Community recreation. Uh, anybody ever heard of pickleball? All right, we've got some pickleball people here. So, had the opportunity to attend uh, the national conference just a week ago, and um, folks there wanted to talk to everybody about pickleball, and I was proud to say that we know about it in Stafford. So, pickleball is a great game. It's for individuals of all ages. It's uh, played with a paddle. Um, it's a combination of tennis, badminton, and um, uh, ping, pong. ping pong. Yeah, and it's a variety of the rules, right? And um, has a whole group unto itself. I will tell you, it, we started with seven players in Stafford County, I think, uh, several years ago. We started with seven. We have over 100 people playing pickleball. Um, I'm proud to tell you that Stafford County had it first, and we received a call from Fredericksburg. They'd like to know more about it. They re we received a call from Spotsylvania that we'd like to know more about it. And now there is a whole regional pickleball association that you can play in Fredericksburg, Spotsylvania, or Stafford. So pickleball just took off like crazy. And uh, it's a great game for all ages. It really is. Um, of course, we have all of those other things. W one of the big things that Community Rec is in charge of are our special events. I don't know if everybody, anyone has ever been to the July 4th Spectacular at Pratt Park. Anybody? The fireworks, um, the day's events, that all comes under our community recreation division. Concerts, summer camps, things of that sort. There's a few of our special events right there. Camps and classes. This is uh, primarily another uh, piece of our community recreation group. Um, Community recreation right now, I will tell you that there's a real emphasis in recreation now for health and wellness. The trend overall for recreation professionals is to bring health and wellness to our community. So I think what you'll see more and more is kayaking. We're offering more hiking trips. Um, we had adults who went snow tubing last year. We went, had adults who went zip lining. We're realizing, folks, that we have people who want to do active things in our community, and, and we're, we're looking to provide those things for our community. So um, we're doing a lot of different things. And you can find those all again in our brochure. Teen Service Learning Program. This, this came out really well. Um, we did a study with a company did called Greenplay. And one of the things that Greenplay, uh, when they came in and did the study of our programs and our facilities, they told us that we needed more teen programming. And this, I will share with you, tends to be a group that's difficult once they become teenagers to get them to come in. First of all, they're very active. I think we'll all agree with that. And they have many other activities. But this is one project we put together that worked very well. We brought a group of teens in, they picked teen service projects, 
and they went out and did those projects and we had a great group and it turned out to be a really good program. So we are moving in that direction as well as in addition to the active adult programming, we're looking for more teen related programming within our community. Gymnastics and cheer. Um, down on Route 17, uh, across from the commuter lot, Falls Industrial, we are currently in a, we have a gymnastics center. I will tell you that this makes us unique as far as recreational programs, as far as um, county recreational programming goes. So our gymnastics program provides weekly programming to over 700 children every week. Uh, we believe that our gymnastics program is a place for any child to start. The skills that they can learn in our gymnastics program, whether they want to decide to be in baseball, football, whatever the sport is, if they can learn socialization, if they can learn uh, agility, if they can learn balance, if they can learn many things that gymnastics teaches, that they will be better at the sport they may choose later in life. So we start down there at about 18 months, and we go all the way up to high school age um, gymnastics folks. We also have a team gymnastics program. We have a, um, recreational gymnastics as well as a team. And I will share with you that last year we were extremely excited. We were uh, awarded the state gymnastics uh, level tournament that we held at the University of Mary Washington. And we've been awarded it again this year for 2018. So we're really excited with where our gymnastics program is going. Um, gymnastics program, again, serves a wide variety of children. Um, and it's not just for girls. This year, excited to tell you we started a boys program. We have 12 boys down there, and they are so excited. They, we're going we're gonna to have them on a team as well, so they're going to compete. And these boys are something else. We have some, uh, anybody familiar with uh, American Ninja on TV? So we have some ninja equipment that they, they go on to, and, and they're just, they love it. I mean, they love it. And so we have, this is boys and girls, um, and it's, it's really exciting. And then 55 active adults. I've talked about this a little bit. You know, um, our active adults want to be just that. And that's some of the things that I talked about a little bit earlier. We're looking at some more adventure type programming for our active adults. And uh, that's all part of that health and wellness for our community is coming through this type of programming. So that's really what we're moving to, you know. Maybe we still have the bingo and the bunko that you can see, but we also have those active trips, whether it be hiking, biking, kayaking, zip lining, all of those things. Another picture of them there. That's, um, as you can see there, we have the, uh, their zip lining picture actually there. That's our weekly exercise program that we have down at the Rouser building. And um, a few things that we do. There's some trips. We also have trips. So we have been, I don't know if anybody has been on a trip with us that's here. Have you folks? Great. Um, we take trips and have um, since I've worked here in the county. And we go a variety of places. We've been Hawaii. We've been to the Caribbean. We've been to Europe once. Um, but um, throughout the United States many times. So if you're interested in trips, you want to go with a nice group, meet some new people, um, they're in our booklet. We also have um, a great group. Community Recreation, in case you don't know, is down at the Rouser Building. So I encourage you to stop in there, talk to our staff. They can tell you more about uh, our trips and activities. And here's just a map of Stafford County uh, Parks and Community Facilities. Shows you where our different facilities are located throughout the county. Here's our Parks and Rec Recreation Commission. Uh, our meetings are held on the third Thursday of the month, and they're held at 7 o'clock p.m. Generally, they are held at the Courthouse Community Center, which is just across the street. 
However, I encourage you uh, to give us a call or check our website if you're interested in attending a meeting. Sometimes the meetings will go to a different facility to, um, for, for any number of reasons, but generally they are at the Courthouse Community Center. So here are a few of the things that we're looking to move ahead on. Um, additional space. Um, again, I mentioned fitness and wellness programming, Musselman Park, uh, expansion at Duff Green Park, uh, Padawamic Park, and the Belmont Ferry Farm Trail. Um, just a few of the items that we're looking ahead to. And that's all I have.